So we're moving on. We're moving on to the um, the um, second characteristic of existence. Yeah? The second underpinning kind of characteristic. And the second one, the second one is dukkha. Now, really, I had the same feeling, you know, as I was, I was starting to prepare my, my thoughts for this morning. My, my first thought was my heart sunk a little bit, you know, it's like, oh, really? Really? Do we have to, do we have to spend some time on this? Don't we already know that? You know, haven't we been over that in various ways, in various ways, etc.? Of course we have. And, um, you know, how to say something new, how to say something fresh, how to be entertaining, how to be, you know, all, you know how to be meaningful, meaningful, meaningful about this, this topic. And um, I happened to run into a quote last night that I want to start out with, reading to you. It's a Rumi quote. You all know Rumi, the poet. <clears throat> he said, <clears throat> your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all of the barriers that you have built against it. <clears throat> I'm going to read this once more because it's so uh, on the spot and relevant to this topic. <clears throat> your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all of the barriers that you have built against it. All we need to do is substitute when we're talking about dukkha and we're gonna capture something really quite central to the understanding of dukkha in, in Buddhist psychology. Your task is not to, to seek for freedom. We could say freedom or happiness. We could substitute either of those, but merely to seek and find all of the barriers that you have built, conditioned, constructed against them. Yeah? <clears throat> because it's the searching, it, it's the searching for freedom or happiness that itself can be part of the problem because implicit in that search is the sense that this moment is not enough. I am not enough. I'm not good enough. Something is not quite enough here. You know? Maybe someday, or maybe even in this moment, maybe if just something would stay or something would go almost, it might almost be enough for me to really oh, feel more deeply at home, but not quite. So let me look at the not quite, you know, and, and so much, <clears throat> so much of the, of the understanding of Dukkha. I mean, we'll, we'll be spending some time on this and there, there's so many levels uh, of, you know, of dukkha. <clears throat> but much of it is to begin to, to see the ways that we construct our strategies, <clears throat> our strategies, even in the, in the service of, of being happy. We, we want to be happy. We all acknowledge that. <clears throat> but part of that is, well, but I'm not quite, you know, there's this part of myself that I don't like. There's this part of the world I don't like. There's this part, of, something isn't quite enough. I'm, I feel it, I'm, I'm restless. I'm, I'm, I'm moving into the next moment. Maybe the next moment will be enough, but not quite, not this one. You know, it, it, you know the way we, we, we will present these, all of these teachings, it's, a, it's important to, to dial them back to the, the immediately. How are they play out? How are they playing out moment to moment for us? You know, and Duke is no exception. I mean, we'll talk about some that the, the, the larger conceptual models around Duke too, you know, the existential unavoidables of, of um, old age and sickness and death, you know? Okay, we get, we get that. 
and not getting what we want and getting what we don't want in some of the ways that they frame it up in Buddhist psychology and the dukkha of impermanence itself, you know, nothing stays, you know, etc. The, the physical pain, the dukkha of physical pain and all that and all that. <clears throat> but <clears throat> the dukkha, the, 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 the Buddha spent the most time on Where the, the, where the, was, the, was the dukkha that we do have some, we, there's some way we can look into it and begin to shape, to shape it. We can begin to see what we're doing, to see how we're participating in it and begin gradually to let it go, let go a little bit more, you know? So it's the, um, it's beginning to see, you know, that, 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 that core definition of dukkha there, that simple, simple, uh, the de de definition of dukkha well, is uh, for me one of them is the most user friendly definition is wanting something other than what is here to be here which also means wanting something that is here to be gone you know something else just the, the movement toward wanting something slightly else or dramatically else right and also this the 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 actually real definition dukkha was the um and you may know this, but in, all, on, in those days, the days before um, motor vehicles, um, <laughs> they had ox-driven carts. And, and sometimes, and of course these are all handmade, and sometimes the, the axle would not fit particularly well. Uh, it, it was not a snug fit in the wheel itself. So that every time the wheel turned, it was still turning, you know, you were, it was still moving along, but every time the wheel turned, there was that little bump, that little bump, that little bump, right? And um, that's what dukkha means. The cart doesn't, the, 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 the axle is not fitting in the, in, the, in the wheel well so snugly, you know, so that there's a bump and there's a bump. Well, okay, that's a cool concept too, but it's like, what are the bumps? What, is, what does that mean? And we have to look closely and see what, what does that mean? In other words, and not conceptually, but what is in this moment? What is it about not feeling totally at home right now in this moment? Yeah. It's not so much getting somewhere else. That's our, that's our tendency is to see what is it? What is it? What is it that's, that's, what is that barrier that I've built against it? Or it, and the barrier itself sometimes is the wrong kind of seeking, you know, which is the seeking that eh, it's not here. It couldn't possibly be here. This couldn't possibly quite be enough. Yeah, not quite. Yeah. The dukkha of not wanting to fully make a relationship with the present moment just as it is. And now, when you read about um, any of the states of waking up or getting clearer, it, if you really look at them, it's like, is this really what it is? Yes, it really is. It's not getting something else. It's finally learning how to deconstruct or let go of some of the barriers that we have erected to keep us from feeling simply alive and full and at home, it's something that starts to naturally arise when we stop some of the strategies of acquisition and the strategies of avoidance and the and the self and the and the doubting, the doubting of the self and the restlessness to find to where is it? Where is my true home? You see, it's all of that. That's, that's not happening so much anymore. It's like, oh, oh, yeah. that direction, that's the direction. Yeah, yeah. It takes us a while to get that direction. Even, it takes us a while even to get that direction because we're not wired in that direction. That's not what we do, you know? And that itself is the pattern that we need to see again and again and again and again. It's actually one of those patterns that can keep playing out even in meditation. I'm meditating. I'm really, no, this is how I'm meditating. This is it. 
I think I've almost got all the, all, it's all arranged just right. I think this is it. And we, we don't, we, we, we fail to see the pattern itself, the pattern of not enoughness, the pattern of how I'm still in a slightly different way, uh, reinforcing the pattern of incompleteness in the way that I'm seeking. Yeah. There was be another, we could say, you know, there's this other thing that could be in the, in the Eightfold Path, it is in there, it is in there, but right seeking, mm -hmm. there is wrong seeking, mm -hmm. you know? And that's not spelled out explicitly in there, but it's woven in there. What is right seeking? Yeah. It has more to do with letting go than accruing something else, you know? Yeah. It has more to do first with just seeing that pattern. What is it? The pat then what are these moments of enough not enoughness? Whoa. Yeah. How is it not enough? Two cats here in the bed, beautiful day, safe space, healthy. What what else, what is it? What it yeah, don't we all do that? Is it? That's dukkha. That's the dukkha that we can do something about. You know, that's the dukkha that we can do something about. Not all at once, <laughs> for sure. And not as a matter of cognition, although the cognition helps to point the direction. But as a matter of guiding our practice, you know. So in various ways, we'll be highlighting this and all of this with, you know, probably in a couple of weeks, you know. But again, to make it super relevant for us. Yeah, you know. Oh, okay. <laughs>